Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio program. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and this episode is the first episode in a short series I'm going to do on the Jezebel spirit. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm doing this. One of the reasons that I'm teaching on Jezebel right now is I'm doing a a spiritual warfare series for 2022. It's been 10 years since I did the first one. And I've had a lot of requests to do the second one. And I'm also teaching at my church about spiritual warfare. So it kind of all goes together. The other reason that I'm doing it is because we know the spirit of Elijah comes in the end times. Anywhere Elijah goes, Jezebel always follows. She always chases the prophets and tries to kill the prophets. So I believe that this is a, a very needed message for these end times. Now, what I'm going to be teaching is a combination of new things that I have encountered in the Jezebel spirit and the old things that I already knew about the Jezebel spirit. This is what you call the education you never really wanted to get, but you got anyway. And I don't know anybody that don't know at least one Jezebel, but many people know more than one. I've encountered it numerous times over even the last 10 years. Let me also mention, before I forget to say this, that um, I was talking to my friend Nicole and, um, you know, she teaches a lot on the Kundalini spirit. In Kundalini, we discovered when we first began learning about it, is a spirit that the person hosting the Kundalini needs to command to go themselves. You can help them cast it out, but they need to renounce it and command it to go. We believe, after talking on the phone, that Jezebel is also a spirit that the person needs to renounce, repent for, and command out themselves. You can help them, but we believe that the person caring or hosting the Jezebel needs to command it to leave themselves. So keep that in mind because this is something that comes up often if you if you do very much deliverance. I don't work in deliverance. I teach deliverance. I teach people how to deliver themselves. Okay, let's get started. Dealing with demonic spirits is never a pleasant thing. Can I just say that? But of all of them, There is one that leaves their victim scarred in ways that I have yet to witness by any other demon, and it's Jezebel. If you have ever encountered a low-down, scheming, manipulative, really mean-spirited person who will do anything or say anything to get their way, who constantly makes unreasonable demands of people, you have probably encountered her. And I call her a her. She can affect, demons obviously don't have male or female gender. I call it a her because Jezebel was a queen when she walked on the earth. But she can afflict both males and females. And I've seen her in both. As I've said many times, if Satan has a wife, it's Jezebel. She acts just like him. Jezebel's number one tool is fear. She will try to intimidate you and make you afraid. She will threaten to expose you, um, threaten to do things to you, threaten to take things from you. This is classic Jezebel behavior. Her goal is to get her way, whatever her way is, because she does not care about anybody but herself. She is an aggressive, demanding, bullying intimidating narcissist. She has zero conscience. Jezebel spends all her time thinking about what you can do for her and all the reasons why you should. She cannot take criticism whatsoever. If you give her any criticism, she will probably attack you. She is self-centered worse than any other spirit I've ever seen in my entire life. And that's saying something. She gaslights people. She will try to make you think that something's wrong with you. That, no, she didn't really say that. She didn't really do that. You must be imagining things. She likes to use false flattery to get on your good side. So she'll flatter you for this and flatter you for that, and she will love bomb you. 
oh, I love you. Oh, you know, I love you and blah, blah, blah. And it's love, love, love and flatter, flatter, flatter. You know, the Bible warns us about flattery. Proverbs 29 verse 5 says, a man that flattereth his neighbors spreadeth a net for his feet. That is what Jezebel does. She flatters you because she's spreading a trap for you to fall into with the flattery. She will pretend she is weak, ignorant, or helpless to get you to do things for her. She will pretend she has no money or not enough money to get you to buy things or pay for things for her. She is conceited even in cases where it's clear there's nothing to be conceited about. You owe her and you will never not owe her even though you didn't do anything to owe her. Recognizing this spirit is important because those who carry it will try to destroy you if you are in a position they want or sometimes if you have something they want. Do not expect a a Jezebel to seek deliverance. I have never seen one seek deliverance. Some people say that Jezebel is a ruling spirit. I think it's possible. She is definitely bigger than the regular sized demons, if that's the best way to describe it. She's not one of the small, common, easy to cast out spirits. Jezebel, if you could even get a host to seek deliverance, is known for coming out fighting and screaming very loudly. And she will also throw up every minor spirit helping her before she herself comes out. She is a bully that manipulates and bosses everybody else around to get what she wants. If she is at all attractive, she will use her powers of seduction. She seeks out very non-aggressive males to mate with because she can dominate them. Jezebel severely traumatizes those she interacts with. I'm talking about lifelong trauma, okay? She leaves a path of destruction and loss in her wake everywhere she goes. She will blatantly usurp the power of others and act like it's her right. She brings strife and chaos everywhere she goes, and she is a mocker. There is a mocking spirit that runs with her, and if you don't do what she wants, she will mock you. She thinks she's better than everybody else, and she can act very humble and very sweet, but it is a front, and if you just wait long enough, the fangs always come out. 1 Kings 19 verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. She was talking about them. She was talking about uh, all the false prophets, the prophets of the false gods that Elijah had slain. Jezebel uses false accusation to turn you against other people that she sees as a threat or to get what she wants also uses false accusations to turn others against you. She is a liar. She lies, lies, lies. Jezebel hates the prophets and will often seek to destroy them or remove them from any position they hold if they happen to hold one. 1 Kings 18.4, For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Jezebel brings division. She will assume a religious appearance for a while, but in truth, she is her own God. You can sometimes spot this spirit through a photograph showing the eyes of the host. Eyes are the windows to the souls, remember? She is entirely unrepentant. She will fake repentance, but it is fake. Jezebel is a witchcraft spirit. The Jezebel that was the queen on earth, was a witch. She practiced witchcraft. The witchcraft surrounding Jezebel brings so much confusion and chaos with it that when added to the intimidation and demands, makes it easier to give in to the demands than to fight her off. This is part of the trap she sets. Acting sweet, submissive, and seductive, she lures non-aggressive partners into the trap. After she has them secure in her web by means of marriage, employment, blackmail, or whatever, then she starts demanding they do this or buy her that. And it better be the biggest and the best, too. It wasn't their fault. Even if you saw Jezebel do it, 
it still wasn't their fault. In fact, they were the victim. Jezebel lies constantly, and they believe their lies. All the lies they make up, they believe them. They also subscribe to the adage that if you repeat a lie enough times, you can make everyone believe it. Jezebel is into appearances. They often will stand out from the crowd in their uniqueness because they love attention and do not feel it's necessary to follow along with, you know, trends and what other people do. She is the queen after all. Remember, absolutely unforgiving. Can hold a grudge against you till Jesus comes back, literally. Plays the victim complete with fake tears and appearing pitiful. Whoever the real victim is in any situation is irrelevant and left stranded by the wayside. This is just one of their manipulative behaviors. They've got a whole toolbox full. Jezebel was a queen when she lived on the earth, and anybody that that spirit is on expects you to treat them like one. And don't you forget it either. Jezebel disregards any feelings or rights of other people. As far as she's concerned, they have no rights. You must understand that you and how you feel do not matter in the least. Jezebels appear charming and charismatic. They make friends easily, but run them off with their demanding arrogance. They, Jezebel is so arrogant. She is a narcissist. If you don't know what a narcissist is, look that up. It's very vile. Acts sensitive, but has no sensitivity to others. Will use prophetic witchcraft to, wit to reach her goals, which means giving pr false prophetic words in favor of what she wants, okay? or to manipulate someone, cannot stand to be ignored, has no conscience whatsoever. Whoever she hurts to get what she wants, they don't matter. She deserves the powerful position she usurps. They do not. They should have been more skilled at the game she's playing. That's the way she sees that. Jezebel does not and will not ever believe she has done anything wrong about anything. Even when the evidence of what she did is right in front of her face, she did not do anything wrong. Get used to that. She is very sneaky and underhanded. She hates authority and will look for ways not to submit. If she pretends to submit, it will be short-lived and only a front until she gets what she's after. The presence of this demon has a strong effect on a congregation. She will manipulate, divide, and bring much destruction to try to get what she wants. This spirit quenches the anointing in a church. It is a very jealous spirit. Jezebel, being a witchcraft spirit, travels in a cloud of confusion. When you get around somebody that has a strong infestation of Jezebel, all of a sudden it's like you cannot think straight. It's like a cloud descended on your mind. And if you get away from them, your mind will clear. It's that witchcraft spirit attacking your mind. Jezebels are skilled at confrontation, and they like confrontation. When confronted, they know how to twist their words, your words, and the situation to their favor and come out on top. A lot of hosts are unaware they are carrying a Jezebel, but many still do not want to be delivered. Jezebel secretly hates men and children, including her own. Her ego and vanity are limitless. She constantly seeks power and attention. She does not care what she has to do to attain the power. Once she is in power, you will have a very hard time removing her from that position. She clings very tightly to her own money while pretending she doesn't have any to get others to pay for things that she wants. I worked for someone once that had that spirit, and that was a constant, constant. And she had money. Must be in control of every situation. Wants to be the center of attention and tries to always be the center of attention. Can often be seen with an entourage of, quote, friends she manipulates to help her reach her goals. Can be beautiful and charming, especially if she's young, but is sociopathic, meaning there is no conscience and no remorse for anything she does. Tends to pick very passive partners that are easy to dominate and boss around. <laughs> Jezebels don't seek deliverance because they don't think anything's wrong with them. It's wrong with you. 
They run all over and abuse everyone that gets close to them. Repeatedly. Jezebels, if you get in a relationship with them, do not want you to have any contact with your family or friends, and they don't want any contact with your family or friends either. The reason is because your family and friends will see through them and identify their abuse of you and could rescue you from her clutches. This is part of her control. It's part of the spider web she gets you trapped in. They seek to isolate you completely to make you easier to manipulate. Jezebel will not only make you her slave, but you will also be required to serve anyone else she chooses, such as her children, family members, boss, or co-workers. Jezebel will act like your closest confidant until they get something they can use against you. Beware, Jezebel is a blackmailer. Jezebel will always try to chum up to the people she or he deems to be the most powerful in the church, workplace, etc. She loves to use intimidation. Jezebel expects your complete loyalty unquestioningly, but she, you will get none from her. None. Zero. You can occasionally encounter a Jezebel on a church leader. This is more common in cult settings, but it can happen in a church. The person will be very controlling and will seek to take the worship for themselves. They do not point you to Jesus. They point you to them. That's how you can tell. Knowledge and understanding rooted in God's word are your best defense against any demonic spirit that comes against you, but especially this one. Jezebel can be found in both men and women, but is more common in women. She can traumatize you and then convince you it was your fault and bring more confusion that way and by gaslighting you. To add to all the other trauma you will suffer if you're forced into contact with her for any length of time or him. So who was King Ahab and how did he come to marry Jezebel in the first place? King Ahab, according to the Bible, was the son of King Omri. He was one of Israel's most powerful rulers. He was the king of the northern ten tribes of Israel from 874 to 853 B.C. Many consider him the worst ruler that ancient Israel ever had. His wife Jezebel was so evil that she has come to symbolize revengeful, malicious, immoral, and cruel women throughout history. By the way, Jezebel is very cruel. When Ahab married Jezebel, he became the first Israelite king in the Bible who allied himself to heathenism through marriage. Jezebel was a pagan princess of a man from Tyre named Ethbel, who was a priest of the god Astarte. Persuaded by his wife, Ahab built an altar in Samaria dedicated to the false god Baal. Needless to say, God was not happy with him. You can read about that in 1 Kings chapter 16, start in verse 30. What Ahab wanted, he got, especially with the help of his evil wife Jezebel. One day he offered his neighbor Naboth a choice of either a better vineyard somewhere else or money for the land he owned. Naboth refused. When he could not buy Naboth's land from him, he went home and pouted like a little kid. When, when Jezebel found out what happened, she arranged for her husband to own the land by having the landowner killed. 1 Kings 21, 7 through 10 and 15. This king of Israel was so evil that Elijah the prophet prophesied the extermination of him and his entire family. When he repented, however, God let him live and postponed the punishment on his posterity. 1 Kings 21, 17 to 29. Jezebel experienced no such repentance like her husband. The Eternal proclaimed that after her death, the dogs would fight to eat her flesh by Jezreel's wall. 1 Kings 21, 23. It's fun to remind her of that. 1 Kings 16, starting at verse 30. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Verse 31, and it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Verse 32, and he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. Even a God-fearing person can end up living in the same 
household as a Jezebel. By the way, Jezebel's biggest fear is always the same thing she's threatening you with. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 18 and 19 shows us that even great men and women of God can be intimidated by a Jezebel spirit, but they just need to learn how to overcome it. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. This was Elijah. First Kings chapter 21 shows us the truth that Jezebel does not play by the rules. She plays dirty. All her game is under the table, and she is completely without honor. First Kings 21, starting in verse 6. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. In other words, I'll show you how it's done, Ahab. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. There she goes, usurping authority. And sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, that's the devil, before him to bear witness against him with lies, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. Jezebel has no reverence and no fear of God whatsoever. She'll act like she does, but she don't. Because if she did, she wouldn't do all the underheaded things she does, and she would not lie, and she would not try to hurt people. 1 Kings 21, starting in verse 1, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab the king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it, or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Why did Naboth say he was forbidden to sell it? Because in Leviticus 25, starting in verse 23, the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me. Jezebel uses her powers of charm and seduction to stack the deck in her favor. She does not care how she gets her way, only that she does. 2 Kings chapter 9 Verse 22, And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? Jezebel cuddles up to power to get her way. No scheme is too dirty for her. She will always offer her, quote, help to those in power because she loves to get close to powerful people and will try to usurp their power, or will try to make people believe she has access to their influence. It is very common to see Jezebels in churches cuddling up to the pastor so they can run things from behind the scenes their way. 1 Kings 21.8 So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Remember, he was king of the northern kingdom of Israel at that time. And sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. Jezebel uses other people to do her dirty work, to do you in, and she goes for the kill. She did not just want to intimidate Naboth into selling the vineyard. She wanted him completely out of the picture. She wanted him dead. He was a godly man, and Jezebel hated the people of Yahweh. Jezebel will often align herself with immoral people, people who are willing to do her bidding, children of Belial, that will do her dirty work for her so she can keep her hands clean and pretend she had nothing to do with it when she throws them under the bus. She is an idolatress filled with evil and demonic spirits. She always wants to be the center of attention. You can only fight a Jezebel spiritually. There is no other way to win. She loves to fight and to win. 
To us, it is draining. To her, it is energizing. And by the way, when you are in contact often with a Jezebel spirit, you will be worn completely out. It saps all your energy. She loves to instill fear. There is never any peace when Jezebel is pursuing you. No rest, so you are com constantly exhausted. She is a witchcraft spirit, so those, those carrying it always end up with mental issues because witchcraft is using mind power to override good with evil. So it opens the door to the mind to the enemy because what they're doing is wrong. It's against God. So the doorway to the mind, what they're using to commit the sin, is open wide open to Satan. And guess what? He'll bring all kinds of mental illnesses in there. Jezebel is prideful, extremely prideful, and dead set on getting her way. She is determined. Her biggest fear is she won't get her way, okay? And her big, other biggest fear is to be ridiculed. She always wants to look good, and she always wants to make people sorry they crossed her. To cross a Jezebel is to declare war. Jezebel will always try to make sure you are outnumbered. Two lying men against honest Naboth is an example. And she thinks her minions won't turn on her, but God can cause them to. The man that ousted Jezebel out that window openly showed their loyalty to her enemy when they killed her. Only God decides how and when defeat comes, but when he does, it will be swift and there will be no recourse. If you want to know if somebody has a Jezebel spirit, the easiest way to find out is to say no to her. If she flips completely out on you, or he, whoever's carrying the spirit, flips completely out on you and loses their mind on you, they have it. That test is right 100% of the time, by the way. Know this. God himself will only allow Jezebel to go so far because she is working against him. So if you keep your side of the street clean and continue to do what's right, and you act honorably and respond as Jesus taught you to respond, God will help you and he will fight that battle for you and he will win. And the end of Jezebel is always complete destruction. So after Jezebel did all this and had Naboth killed and Ahab got the vineyard, I want to read you what happened, how God paid them back. In 1 Kings 21, starting in verse 17. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he is, whither he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall the dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. And then down to verse 23, And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the, way of, by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. There was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. It's one of the things that Jezebel does is she stirs up her husband, and she stirs up anybody close to her trying to get them to do wrong. So God paid them back. And by the way, the wall of Jezreel is very, is very important in this because Naboth's vineyard was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab. So God told him basically, okay, you took this vineyard. I mean, you're going to die, and the dogs are going to lick your blood right over there by where that vineyard is, okay? And they did go exactly as God said they would, and the dogs licked their blood, just like God said. When you attack the people of God, if you have a Jezebel spirit on you, you better get rid of it, because if she attacks through you, the people of God, God will tear you up. And if you, as a child of God, have been attacked by a Jezebel spirit, just stand and do the right thing, and God will handle the rest because he will smack her down. Watch and see. Okay, that's all I have for y'all in this episode. I'm probably going to do one more episode on Jezebel. I don't think I have enough material for two, but I'll probably do one more. So I want to give y'all as much information on this vile spirit as I can. Check yourself. If you think you have a Jezebel, renounce it, rebuke it, cast it out. Keep casting it out until it is gone. And cast out every demon that is in there helping it. 
Because if you don't, vengeance falls on you from the Lord. Jesus bless you. Thanks for listening. Y'all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc., Glenda Lomax, P.O. Box 60, Glencoe, Arkansas, 72539, or by email at jphtoday at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination. Are there areas of sin in your life you just can't seem to overcome no matter how hard you try? Many people live their whole lives under curses. Without understanding, they can be free. Learn what the scriptures say about curses and why they are still relevant today. Hosea 4.6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Learn how to defeat every curse through the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. If you have the knowledge, you can break curses off your life and start experiencing breakthroughs like never before. In the book Loosed from Chains of Darkness, you will learn the basics of four different types of curses. Loosed from Chains of Darkness is the most comprehensive curse-breaking book on the market today. Get your copy of Loosed from Chains of Darkness by Glenda Lomax, available on Amazon.com in print, Kindle, and audiobook versions. Do you know someone suffering from domestic violence or another form of abuse like verbal abuse? Did you know abuse has deep spiritual roots that cause abuse to be attracted to a person throughout their lifetime? Now, the Escaping Abuse Study Guide helps you discover and remove those spiritual roots so you won't be an abuse magnet. Get the Escaping Abuse Study Guide or get one for a friend. Available now on Amazon.com. Escaping Abuse Study Guide by Glenda Lomax. Available now on Amazon.com.